well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. And for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. for this seventh Sunday of Easter is as recorded in the first chapter of Acts, verses 12 through 26, and reads as thus. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they had been staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All of these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women 
and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David, concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Akaladama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who had have a, accompanied us during all time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barasabas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show us which one of these two have you chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias. And he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. We join together in reading Psalm 133 responsibly. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard of the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle, as recorded in Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 6, and then 12 through 20. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life, which its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for healing of the nations. No longer will there be any accursed, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no lamp, no light or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true, and the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must 
soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the word of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, Do not seal up the words of this prophecy in this book, for the time is near that the evildoer shall do evil, and the filthy shall be filthy, and the righteous still do right, for the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay everyone for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are for the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and anyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let the one who hears say, come, and let the ones who are thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share of the tree of life and in the holy city in which are described in this book. He who tra testifies to me these things say, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Jesus said, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, 
and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated as we sing the sermon hymn. will be turned to joy 
joy for all eternity. And last Sunday, the sixth Sunday of Easter, it was Jesus reassuring us again that we have absolutely nothing to fear because He has indeed overcome the world. And now today, on this seventh Sunday of Easter, this last Sunday of Easter, it's Jesus praying for all of us as Christ followers, praying that we might be one, one in faith, one in purpose, and one in mission. So, beloved, let's dig deeper. Our Gospel reading this morning is from John's Gospel, the 17th chapter. It's the last section of our Lord's High Priestly Prayer. It's the very end of one the Thursday night. So these are the last words we hear from Jesus before he crosses the Kibbutz Valley and enters the Garden of Gethsemane. These are the last words we hear Jesus speak before Judas betrays him and he's arrested by the chief priests and the Pharisees. So these are very, very precious words for us. Very important words for us. Especially since today we're not only basking in the afterglow of the empty tomb, we're also basking in the afterglow of our Lord's ascension. Ascension Day was this past Thursday. We Lutherans aren't very good about coming out on a Thursday evening <laughs> for Ascension worship. Right? But Ascension Day is the day we as Christ followers celebrate our Lord's victorious return home to heaven as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It's the day we remember Jesus having been here among us, living his life for us. Dying his death for us. Leaving the grave behind empty for us. It's also the day we remember our Lord going there. Going home to sit at the Father's right hand. And finally, it's the day we remember our Lord's promise to be with us always. Even to the end of the age. He is everywhere we are. That's his promise. Here. There. Everywhere. That's what we remember on Ascension Day. That's what we celebrate on Ascension Day. And now today, on this seventh Sunday of Easter, on this last Sunday of Easter, our Lord's Ascension shapes and informs how we hear our readings today. So again, Let's dig deeper. Again, our gospel reading this morning is the last section of our Lord's High Priestly Prayer. In the first section of this prayer, Jesus prays for himself. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So beloved, the time of our Lord's passion is here. The hour has come. It's time for Jesus to walk the Via Dolorosa to the place of the skull. It's time for him to be nailed to a cross. It's time for him to bear the sins of all humankind. It's time for him to conquer sin, death, and Satan. It's time for him then to leave the grave behind empty. And here at the cross, here at the empty tomb, is where Jesus reveals God's glory, God's real presence among his people. Here at the cross, here at the empty tomb is where the way to eternal life becomes ever so clear, ever so visible. Then in the second section of this prayer, Jesus prays for his disciples there in that place. 
I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. So Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is true. As you send me into the world, I am sending them into the world. So Jesus asked the Father to protect his disciples there and then. He asked the Father to sink the truth of his word deep into their hearts there and then. And he asked the Father to sanctify them, to empower them through his word as they go out into the world there and then to share the good news of the living Lord Jesus. Finally, I know, it's taken me a while to get here, but finally, we come to the words of our gospel reading this morning, the third section of our Lord's High Priestly Prayer. And here, our Lord Jesus prays for all believers everywhere. My prayer, says Jesus, is not for them alone, not just for the twelve disciples there and then. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. And what does Jesus pray for all believers everywhere? That all of them may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Our psalm this morning, how good and pleasant it is when people live together in unity. Jesus prays that all believers everywhere would be one. But this unity has a purpose, a very important purpose, a missional purpose, that the world may believe that you sent me. Our unity as Christ followers is more than just unity in faith. Our unity as Christ followers is a unity that leaves all of us as Christ followers everywhere, in every nook and cranny of this planet, to share the good news of forgiveness, life, and salvation in our living Lord Jesus, both in words and action. Notice our Lord's heart here. His heart's desire is that the whole world, every man, woman, and child on this planet, Come to a saving faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And beloved, He's given Christ followers everywhere a very precious gift. The gift of His glory. The gift of His real presence among us. And this gift of His glory, this gift of His real presence among us, brings us together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Because of His glory, because of His real presence among us, as Christ follows, we are one in Christ. Everywhere there are believers. We're everywhere. In just two weeks, I get to go to Rwanda again as the leader of these numbers have faces to celebrate graduations of two classes of our students. I get to celebrate this milestone in their life and to celebrate their love of Jesus with them as well. We are brothers and sisters in Christ wherever there are believers around the world. We have brothers and sisters in Christ everywhere. So listen carefully to these next words. I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Yes, beloved, we are one in faith, one in purpose, and one in mission. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. 
more. Jesus reveals even more of his heart's desire. His heart's desire is that Christ followers everywhere spend eternity with him. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. And finally, the desire of our Lord's heart is that God's love might dwell within all of us as Christ followers everywhere. Indeed, his heart's desire is that he himself dwell with all of us as Christ followers everywhere. Righteous Father, praise Jesus, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known, so that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. What a powerful, powerful prayer this is. Jesus prays for himself here and for the disciples there and then and for all Christ's followers everywhere. Here, there, everywhere. And that, my beloved, brings us to our first reading this morning in the book of Acts, the first chapter. Here we see Jesus' prayer in our gospel reading this morning being answered as the disciples gear themselves up for ministry. Luke begins his book of Acts by sharing the story of our Lord's ascension. Luke tells us that Jesus was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid them from their sight. And as soon as they could see him no more, Luke says, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, the Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. No mention. There's no mention here at all of locking themselves behind closed doors. Our Lord's resurrection and ascension have driven away all their fear. They're free to live the joy of Easter. They're free to bask in the afterglow of the ascension. They're free to live out their mission as Christ followers sent to share the good news. But so are we. But first, these disciples have some work to do. Luke tells us exactly who it was gathered together in that room. It was Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, not Judas Iscariot, who had hanged himself in despair. And Luke tells us that in addition to these 11 disciples, there were also others gathered with them in that room. Several women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brother. And what did they do in this room? Luke says they joined constantly in prayer. And this constant prayer unified them. It brought them together as one. One in faith, one in purpose, one in mission. Yes, beloved, our Lord's high priestly prayer is being answered in the constant prayer of these disciples. And out of this constant prayer comes this strong sense voiced by Peter, but affirmed by all. Again, they're on faith, one on purpose, one on mission. That they need to replace Judas Iscariot and restore the number of apostles to twelve. And Peter gives voice to the criteria that must be met for someone to be a worthy addition to this band of apostles, this band of sent ones. This replacement for Judas Iscariot must be someone who has been with them the whole time Jesus was living among them. From the time God the Baptist was baptizing people in the Jordan River until the time of our Lord's ascension. So why is this first-hand experience of Jesus so important? 
Now, because whoever becomes this twelfth apostle must, in Peter's words, become a witness with us of his resurrection. Again, as apostles, they're meant to be united in faith, united in purpose, and united in mission. They are, after all, the sent ones of Jesus. That's what apostle really means. Sent one. Remember our words I preach in prayer? My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. This band of apostles, this band of sent ones, is about to be sent, not just here, not just there, but everywhere, with the good news of forgiveness, life, and salvation through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So this decision about whom to add as the twelfth apostle is serious and significant. The eleven died in two men, Joseph and Matthias. Then they prayed, says Luke. They prayed for the Lord's will to be done. They prayed for the right person to be revealed. Lord, you know everyone's heart, they prayed. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry which Judas left to go where he belongs. And then what did they do next? They voted as to who they thought would be the best choice, right? No. That's not what they did. They cast lots. As valuable as voting is for us, that's not what the disciples choose to do. They cast lots, trusting the Lord to make the right choice. Trusting the Lord to reveal His choice. Voting is the way we like to do things. Casting lots seems a really foreign way to make an important decision for us. But it wasn't foreign to the disciples at all. And Luke just tells us this rather matter-of-factly. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the eleven disciples. And that was that. Now it's time to be about the business of sharing the good news as our Lord sent ones. And there's a, a sense of urgency here. And that, my beloved, brings us at last to our epistle reading this morning in the last chapter of John's Revelation. Here we see why there is such a sense of urgency among the twelve apostles, the twelve sent ones. John sees the reality of heaven as the Garden of Eden restored. There's a river here flowing with the water of life, and the water is clear as crystal. There's no impurities in it at all. And this river of life flows out from the throne of God and the Lamb. They are the givers of life. And on each side of this river, there's a tree of life, yielding 12 crops of fruit every year. A new crop every month. Can you believe it? This gift of life from God, this gift of life from the Lamb, isn't a chintzy or meager life at all. It's a life to the full, life that's abundant, life that overflows with every good gift of mercy and grace. In fact, John says the leaves of this tree of life are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will serve Him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of the lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Oh, beloved, this is the reality of what is waiting for all of us who are Christ's followers. This is the ultimate fulfillment of our Lord's high priestly prayer. And John says, this reality will be ours soon. Very soon. The angel says to John, these 
words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophet, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. You know, the twelve apostles had no time to waste, and neither do we. Jesus himself says to John and to us, Look, I'm coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. We don't know how much longer it will be until Jesus comes again in glory. But it is soon. So as Christ followers, we hear this sense of urgency in our Lord's voice. Even though it's been over 2,000 years, and it seems like soon will never, ever come, soon will soon be here. So there's no time for us to waste. As Christ followers, we're called to share the good news of Jesus here, there, and everywhere, today and tomorrow and every day until Jesus comes again. And we want to Jesus as he's coming again soon and very soon. Look, I'm coming soon, says Jesus. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb, that they might have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the city. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright morning star. And then John's glorious revelation ends with these words. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. Oh, beloved, that's our urgent message for every man, woman, and child on this planet, whether they be here, there, or everywhere. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Let everyone who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. Yes, says Jesus, I am coming soon. And we as Christ followers here, there, and everywhere say together, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. We rise and join together and tell the story of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Beloved, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Good and gracious God, we pray this day for your church, here, there, and everywhere. We pray that you would indeed drive the good news of Easter deep into our hearts, so that it 
permeates our entire being. Help us in words and actions to share this good news of Jesus with all those around us. And we pray for the church in every nook and cranny of this planet that our fellow brothers and sisters would do the same, sharing the love of Jesus with everyone around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray this day for everyone in need, whether it be need of body, need of emotions, need of spirit, need of soul. We pray that you would hold all of these people close to your heart so that you might touch their hearts with your healing hand. We remember especially Ron and Sue, Fern and Wanda, Marge and Linda, Dorothy, and we just pray again that you would hold them close and meet their needs. Lord, in your mercy, we pray this day for missionary Marion Hungerford in Chad and Cameroon. Let her life and her witness be strong, be compelling, be something that touches the hearts of the people in that place. Lord, in your mercy, we pray this day for those who are giving thanks, who are celebrating. We're thankful for birthdays and for wedding anniversaries. We think especially of 50 years of marriage for Lisa and Terry. And again, we pray that you would surround all of these people with friends and relatives and family who will celebrate all of your good gifts of mercy and grace with them. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. and finally, O oh Lord, we pray for our world. We pray this day for Ukraine and for the tragic war that continues in that place. So many people dying or being wounded. And we feel so helpless, Lord. But you are the all-powerful one. We think of the, the school massacre this week in Uvalde, Texas. And so many children and teachers dead. And again, we scratch our heads and wonder why. We think of the nine incidents of gun violence here in Portland in just the last 24 hours. Lord, where are you? Are you hiding? Sometimes that's how we think and what we feel. And yet we know that even in the midst of all this craziness, in the midst of all this evil, you are still present. You still hold the world in your hand. And so we pray that you would act. Please act. And bring an end to what is evil and wrong. We pray for our leaders that they would use their authority wisely and well to bring good things, to bring justice, to bring fairness and equity for all. Lord, in your mercy, and we pray this Memorial Day weekend for all of those who have given their lives protecting our country. We ask that we remember them and respect them and honor them that we not forget the price of our freedom. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be
rise for the communion liturgy. Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. 
Do this to remember me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
his body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Go in his love, his joy, and his peace. Amen. We rise for the communion canticle. closing hymn. 